Okay, Winnie the Pooh and Piglet. Um, things of note. This has a metal hook, which is nice. Um, also, some of my yarn, the same colors, are in two things. And I don't know why that is. Um, I don't know if it's supposed to come that way. Also, thing that is important... These are the eyes and the nose. They are not safety eyes. These are adhesive eyes, um, which means they're not like child safe. So I will replace these in mine um, with safety eyes. And probably do something else for the nose um because I want them to be child safe because I don't know where they're going to end up so those are things that are relevant okay so um this has us starting with the ears and um Two of each ear and it has us using a magic circle let me get this untied and um you could do two single crochet and then six single crochet in the second chain from the hook instead of a magic circle if the magic circle isn't working for you but we will do the magic circle so, we're going to take our yarn over our fingers. This is the tail. And we're going to wrap it. I usually actually do one to use less yarn. Wrap it. And then I'm holding this with my thumb and I'm going to slip under this first one, the tail. I'm going to grab the other piece of yarn which is attached to the rest of my yarn over here and pull it under and twist and then pinch and then I'm going to switch back to this hand because this is the hand that I hold my yarn with when I crochet and I'm going to chain one so I'm just going to Pull that yarn. I got a little piece stuck here. Um, just pull that yarn on your hook and through the loop. Okay, and then untwist. Although this yarn is split again, so. Okay, I'm tightening that down a little bit um five single crochet in the magic ring so we are going to insert into the loop around both of these pieces here uh grab your yarn pull up a loop so that you have two loops on your hook then yarn over press back against that yarn rotate the hook so that you're catching the yarn in that that hook end and pull through both loops. And then here's your first single crochet. This is the top of it. This is what we're gonna work into. And we're gonna do that again. So we're gonna insert, grab our yarn and pull up a loop. Then we are going to yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook. That's two. Three. four, five. This is the loop on our hook here. We don't count that when counting stitches. Each one of these little V's, these little loops is, or the set of loops is a stitch or the top of a stitch. So one, two, three, four, five. Now when you get down here, this little knot and thing down here, that's your, um, your chain and such and we don't count that so one two 
three, four, five stitches. Now we're going to tighten this loop up by pulling this string and now round two, two single crochet in each single crochet. So when working in the round like this where you're not joining and chaining, you need a stitch marker. Where do we think I left my stitch markers? Okay, stitch markers found. So you have to use a stitch marker uh, to keep track of your rows um, because our next thing is just to do two single crochet in each stitch around. So in each one of these stitches, we're gonna place two single crochet. So here's my first stitch here. Like I was showing before, you can count back if you need to find your what you're gonna work into. Um, you could place a stitch marker in your first single crochet after you make it, but one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to go under both loops of the top of this stitch here. Unless otherwise indicated, always work under both loops of the top of the stitch. The first one is the hardest one to get the hook into. I'm just kind of trying to wiggle it in there. Okay. So, um, we're going to yarn over, pull a loop up under through a stitch, two loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. This is the first single crochet of our new round, and we are going to place our stitch marker in it. I have the clippy kind. If you don't have stitch markers, you could use a bobby pin, you could use a different contrasting piece of yarn color um just don't let it fall out of there um anyways um so we're doing two single crochet in each stitch around which is an increase so we're going to add another stitch to the same one so we're going to go in the same spot here under the same stitch and we are going to work another single crochet this is two and we're going to do this in each stitch around I see I split my loop here. See this? So I'm going to take my hook out and I'm going to pull this up until that split is sorted. And then insert back in. Uh, so that's two. Now this is the next stitch here that we're going to work into. And we're going to put two into here. So I'm going to slip under here or I'm going to try. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops on my hook, three, and then back in the same spot for four. Okay. Now here's our next stitch that we're working into. So we're going to slip under both loops, five, into the same spot, six. Here's our next one here. This will be seven and eight. And then our last stitch of the round right here, we'll work two stitches into here for nine and 10. yarn seems a little bit easy to split but it should be fine okay so there's our second round done we should have 10 stitches two four six eight ten you don't count the loop on your hook you can see the tops of the stitches better now okay so we are now going to do a round of single crochet in each stitch around. So we're just doing 10 single crochet around. And now um, for other parts of this pattern, if I have to do um, a row where I do two single crochet in each stitch around or one single crochet in each stitch around, I won't demonstrate them every time because it's the same exact concept just with however many stitches you have. So I took my stitch marker out. We're gonna work this first single crochet and then put it right back. It's so easy to lose track of your work if you forget to put your stitch marker back in. So we're going to insert under this first stitch 
and complete a single crochet. And split our loop again. Okay. I'm going to put my stitch marker back. So this is one. And we're just single crocheting each stitch around for a total of ten. So that's one. Now here's our next stitch right here. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Maybe it's that the hook is kind of slippery. I feel like plastic would have more grab than metal. Um, okay. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Okay, now as you can see, this has cupped toward us. The edges have curled up toward us. Now, normally this isn't um, specifying, but normally, well, maybe it specifies somewhere else. I just mean when we started, it didn't say right, wrong side or right side. Um, this facing us when we start is our right side. This is the part that usually faces outward. And this is the wrong side. So we are going to curl this um, back that way. But first, I'm going to raise my loop up take out my hook. First, I'm going to weave this end in. Although this hook or hook, this needle has such a small opening. Um, and I think this is more to be for the embroidery stuff. I don't even know if, if this would work for weaving ends in, but we'll give it a try because it's what they include. Um, like, I don't, the yarn is bigger than the, okay, um, so tighten this, pull it to tighten it. And then what I'm going to do is slip under one of these stitches nearby and I'm going to grab this so that I can't pull this all the way through like flush and pull this through. Get, get off, get off. This is such a tiny little needle. And then I'm going to go through that loop that I made with the needle and tighten it down. So we're tying this down. Now, you can, at this point, weave this stitch in a little, or weave this um, thread in a little bit, just to sort of secure the end a little more. Technically, I don't really think you have to, but, so I'm just gonna weave that around a little. And then I'm going to, trim this so it's not in the way later when we try to do things. So now I'm going to come back, rotate or rotate, curl this back the other way, put my hook back in. And now our next and last round is a decrease in each stitch around. So I'm gonna take out my stitch marker. Now a decrease is one single crochet worked across two stitches of your previous round. Now when working in the round with things like this, um, sometimes it can make it seem like 
you have a stitch here that you would work into. Um, this is the stitch that we already worked into. This loop goes around that little bar of that stitch. Um, it's just kind of a thing sometimes when you're, depending on how you're holding your stuff, that can look like a stitch. It's not the one we want to work into. This one is, sometimes it's a little bit of a reach. So to do a decrease, we're going to insert under the first single crochet as normal and pull up that loop so that we have two loops on our hook. Then, instead of completing that single crochet, we're going to insert under the next stitch in the round. Pull up a loop so that we have three loops on our hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through all three at once so that we have one single crochet where we used to have two. So I'm going to put my stitch marker back in and we're going to do that in each stitch around. Um, same thing applies for when you do like a decrease because the decrease tends to pull to the right side. Um, this is not a stitch to work into here. This is the rest of that stitch that we already went into. So it's actually over here. And this is where it can sometimes seem like a bit of a stretch to get into. So we're going to insert under this first one, pull up a loop. Insert under the next stitch and pull up a loop so that we have three loops on our hook and then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all three loops and tighten down. So now our next stitch is this here. So we're going to insert under here, perform another decrease and keep going around and when I work with small things like this I um use my middle finger usually to press the other side down so that my hook won't accidentally go through both layers so working under the next two so one two for our decrease and now our last one One, two, decrease. Okay. So, um, now we are going to tie off with a slip stitch and we're going to leave a little tail to sew the ear on. So for a slip stitch, we are going to insert under the next stitch here. Just these, don't get the other side, but just these two loops here. Actually, I guess it wouldn't matter if you got the other side at this point, but then pull a loop up and pull that immediately through the loop on your hook and tighten that down. Now I'm going to, to estimate how much we need, I'm just going to kind of um, wrap this around about two and a half times around the opening just to get, I mean, it doesn't take that much to sew on an ear that small, but we're going to leave a little tail, not cut ourselves, and pull that out. Okay, so here is one completed ear. Now, um, I would recommend when you have two of something to make that you do both of them, like one after the other. Um... So I'm going to do the second ear off camera and then I'll be back. Okay, so the nose. The nose is stuff that we've all already done basically, but we'll do the magic circle or the magic ring the same way we just did. Let's put that right there. Okay, I'm gonna chain one, rotate back, and then this time we're gonna do six single crochet in. Three. Four. Five, six, 
six. And then the next round is two single crochet and eight single crochet around. So just like we did before, I'll do the first single crochet, put my stitch marker in. Although this is so small, I could just, but okay, so back into the same stitch for two and then just two in each stitch around. This is tiny enough that it's not even going to take that much more time to just do it. Okay, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. And then a row of single crochet, one in each stitch around. Stitch marker back. Okay, so I'm going to do this row and I'm also going to weave this end in um, just like we did the one before. Okay, that round is done, so I'm going to take out my stitch marker. Um, I wove that end in and trimmed it, and I'm going to curl this back out this way, and then we're going to fasten off yellow. Um, and we're going to leave a tail. To sew one. So I'll slip stitch, tighten that down, and then I'll just sort of do this twice around to guesstimate. Okay, now this says switch to black thread. So black thread here. It says separate one strand from the thread, use the plastic needle to sew on the nose. So, if I separate one thread, like one strand, you know, I'd separate this out and use one of these. So, I don't know because that's what it says. I guess maybe for size, but I guess maybe for size. So we'll just do what it says. Although I could just use black thread at that point where they could have just included black thread. So I don't, I don't really understand. And I don't even think that we use. The block elsewhere. I guess we. Okay, so. We're just going to do what they say. This is probably going to take me a minute because this doesn't seem like it's going to want to. Like it's all, you know. I don't know how to do this in an orderly manner. Well, I guess I can kind of do it like this. This is very silly. This seems like a very silly thing to be doing. Okay. All right. Let's put this one aside.
grab the tiny little needle and find the end of this. And actually, let's go ahead and tie this end instead of doing like an embroidery embroidery let's just do this like like we're sewing it on that's my plan so they have theirs coming from the center and just sort of covering this little edge so a little triangle here so I'm gonna go in here and first I'm gonna fasten this end off by slipping under something and then I'm gonna run this needle through the remainder of my loop instead of um I'll do it when it's closer to the edge so that it secures to the thread because the thread has bigger holes than the it would just like slip through now let's see I think we look like we're about I'm gonna come out I want to be inside of this there we go okay so I'm just gonna come out come over and go in And then back, I'm going to come through, out through the center, and go in up here. There's probably a much better way to do this. Then I'm going to come out right here and go through the center. Now I'm just kind of going to fill this in. So let's see. We'll come out here, slip under there. No, oh, come back. I'm coming under this line because I figure then that'll cover any sort of, there was any jaggedness there. Um, okay, now I plan to kind of come out over here. Let me come out where I want to. Okay, like that. I have this little piece of fuzz here. And go across. Get out, fuzz. like so and then basically continue doing those two things until it's covered is my plan I might be doing this wrong but I don't know I was signing up to embroider noses This is starting to be a not ideal. I did think about trying to like kind of weave it. 
This doesn't want to stab through here. You can do it. Little thing. Okay. Um. So. I wonder if there's a better way to do this. There probably is. Let's try to find one. So. Come out here. I was thinking of trying to just weave across, so let's see if that'll work. If I just, like, kind of now do this. Although I'm still going to have to... Okay, let's try to go back now. The other way. Oh, see, that's not so bad. I'm going to go in. Please go in. Okay, there it goes. Looks like I need another one here in this middle. Come out where I want you to. Oh my goodness, okay. Ow. Okay. Um... That looks okay, I guess. It looks crooked. Why does it look crooked? I would much rather make a tiny nose. Okay. It looks like we need some more on the top. Probably a much, much better way to do this. Okay. That looks kind of okay to me. So, we're going to say that we're going to leave this like this. Um, okay. So, now I'm going to... Fasten this off. And I'm going to do the same type of thing. I'm just going to go under one of these black threads here. Tie. I doing tying okay I'm gonna trim this and we will call that 
a finished nose. Very good. Okay, so arms. I'm going to find the center of this yellow instead of using the outside. There we go. Um, just so it unravels more easily. And we are going to do six single crochet in a magic ring. So, um, I'm going to make my magic circle. So I'm going to bring this around. Go under the first loop, grab the second. Oh my goodness. Come on. Pull under and twist. And then... I'll just do a little chain to secure that and then six single crochet into the loop here. So one, two, three, four, five. Um, I'm going to tighten this up and I'm actually going to go ahead and tie this end down now. So, um, just like I did the other ones before, I might have to trim this one again to get this into this little needle. Um, and then this arm is just basically every round is just single crochet in each stitch around. So I'm not going to um, do them all. Um, I'll join and then do the first and move the stitch marker. But then I'll finish that row, the second round. And I'll do most of the third round. Then the third round has a color change at the end. So I'll come back for that. Let's see, put that under a few stitches and I will trim this. Okay, so we'll do our first single crochet of the next round. So counting backwards, two, four, six. So we're gonna insert under right here. Do a single crochet and put in our stitch marker. Oh, these first ones are so tight. Okay. Okay, that's the first stitch. So we're just one single crochet in each stitch around. Moving your stitch marker each time. So I'm going to come back at the end of round three. Okay, so I'm at the last stitch in round three. And we're going to switch to the red yarn. There's a red. And then there's... A dark rose they're very very similar this had less with it but this is like the dark rose um, so to do this color change I'm gonna insert into this stitch like I do the, for the single crochet and I'm gonna pull up the loop of yarn so I'm gonna yarn over and pull that loop up so that there's two loops on my hook but then I'm gonna drop this yellow and I'm going to pick up this red instead and put that over my hook like this and then pull that through those two loops instead. Now I'm going to do my first single crochet the next round because four and five are also um, just single crochet in each stitch around. So I'm going to work this one though over the end of this red tail as well. So I'm going to insert into the stitch, being careful just to get this side of the work, lay that red in between, and then just work that single crochet around it. And then I'm going to trim the yellow. 
take out my hook and I'm going to tie this red end and this yellow end together. to secure that, both colors. And then after that, I'm just gonna kind of stuff them down into the pole. With the other end of the hook. Cause we're gonna stuff these anyway. And might as well just stuff that in there. Okay, so now this is the first stitch of this round and my stitch marker, wherever it is, goes in this red stitch and then this yellow one is the last stitch of my previous round. So I'm gonna find my stitch marker and finish out these, oh, here it is. Finish out these two rows of single crochet in each stitch around. So I'll be back after those two rows. Okay, so here we are at the end of round five. So I'm gonna slip stitch to fasten off. So I'll just slip under the next stitch here, pull up a loop, pull that through the loop on my hook, tighten it down, oh, tighten the whole thing down, not just the loop of it. Um, Guesstimate a tail for sewing. That's probably definitely too much, but whatever. I wanted to get past that little snarl there. And then it wants us to stuff the arm a little. It's not going to take much. Um, and stuffing them this small is kind of finicky, but um, I'm just going to use the back of my hook. And I'm so, I sort of fold it on top of itself to it kind of makes it a little bit thicker so you can actually get stuff in there so I'm just gonna tuck all that in I don't want these little stragglers sticking out Maybe I'll trim them with the scissors. Okay, so. There's the arm. I've already done the other one. Um, now legs. This is a strange pattern in that it starts with all the pieces instead of, you know, just starting with the body. But let's see, what do we got? Okay, so six single crochet in a magic ring. Um, we've done a couple of these, so I'm just gonna do it with not as really any explanation at this point. Although this does like to split when doing this. I think it's maybe because the hook is so slippery. Okay, so we're gonna do six single crochet in here and then we are going to do two single crochet in each stitch around which we've already done so i won't demonstrate that whole thing i'll probably do the first one and put in the stitch marker and then finish it out Let's see where we are. Two, four, five, one more, six. Okay, I'm gonna tighten this down. And I'll put in my first single crochet. So let's see. So two, four, six to our first single crochet the round here. Get under there. Okay, so this is one. Put my stitch marker in. Two under the same stitch. Okay, two in each stitch around until we get back to our stitch marker and I'll be back. 
Okay, so I just finished this row, and I realize that this doesn't make any sense. This says two single crochet in each first single crochet. Seven stitches. It must mean not two single crochet in each, but it must mean a single two single crochet in the first, and then... Yeah, it's supposed to have seven stitches. I thought this was getting kind of big. Okay, so we're going to say that this means that you do two single crochet in the first stitch and then one single crochet in each of the other stitches. That's what we're going to say this means. Because if we want to have seven stitches, that's how we end up with it. So I have my two in the first one. And then just one in the rest, I guess. Okay, so two, four, six, seven. All right, so I'm gonna tie this end down like we did before, and then three, four, five, and six are just seven single crochet, so one single crochet in each stitch around. So I will basically just um, do those four rounds and tie this down and be back. Okay, so this is after round six, um, and as far as counting rounds, I don't think I've done that yet in this one. So this inner circle is round one, and then just each of these lines here is a round. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm just going to finish off with a slip stitch, um, leave a tail, and then I'm just going to stuff the leg the same way that I stuffed the arm so leave a little tail for that um and then i'll make i'll probably start the body this one this is so small so I'm going to finish stuffing this and uh, make the other leg and I'll be back. 